take a deep breath. We're going to count backwards from 20. That's 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Sergeant Lewis, this isn't Iraq or Afghanistan. I call the shots here. Sometimes when you sleep, you say I'm sorry. What are you sorry about, man? You should be on your knees thanking me. Me and every other guy. Thank you for what? For going over there and sacrificing our lives. You know, I've never seen the guys fired up like they were last night. And that was a powerful clip from Happy New Year, which is the story of Sergeant Cole Lewis, who is mentally and physically scarred by the time he served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he finds humanity, he finds compassion, and he finds friendship in a group of similarly injured veterans in a psychiatric ward at a remote veterans hospital. That is one of the many films that you're going to get to see this weekend at the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival. So exciting. Yeah, and the festival's co-founder, Jack Paisner, filmmaker Norman Patrick Brown, and producer Alton Walpole are with us today. Day. Good morning, guys. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thank morning. you all so much. Morning. It's really, it's exciting. I love to see good film, and we're going to definitely get a chance to do that. Jack, let's first talk about the fact that the film festival is basically in its third year already, which is really a good sign, means things are going well. And it's showcasing emerging filmmakers, and we love to see that. And as co-founder, <laughs> as co-founder, what do you really want um, people to get from this? Why do you want these stories to matter? Well, you know, these stories, these films are the dreams and aspirations of young artists. Yeah. And they really do matter. Like a film like Happy New Year, mm. uh, Michael Cuomo and Kayla Romanning will be here to so represent cool. the film. And it's uh, about the war in Afghanistan, which yeah. is just so poignant and important when we have issues like cystic fibrosis and cancer and impoverished nations and the artists there. Uh, we're just really honored to be able to share this and yeah. uh, uh, facilitate uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're telling stories about real life in a way that people can really take something home with them from that and right. take it to heart. Mm -hmm. And each year, the festival designates, of course, an overall and overarching theme. Mm -hmm. What's this year's theme? This yeah. year's theme is social justice. We're highlighting ah. films uh, from all over the world that, you know, take a look at uh, the way we can change things and the, what you can do to empower yourself. And, it's really exciting. Well, tell us about some of the films that are going to be showing. We already saw a few clips right now, but let's talk about some more of them. Oh, we've got a film called Cancer Pants. It's our cancer awareness program. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have a film called Cultures of Resistance by Iata Lee. She went to 13 countries and documented the artists and their political wow. struggles through their art. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many good ones. There's a ton of shorts. There's um, a documentary called Campania Infelix about an Italian cartel that makes 15 billion euro dumping toxic waste into the Whoa. peninsula. Wow. Us Italians know nothing about the toxic waste industry at all, especially <laughs> not in New Jersey. Mm -mm. So with, 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 with the theme being what it is, social justice, and you're talking yeah. about stuff like you said, cancer, and also... Cystic fibrosis. Right. Are, the, are a lot of the films kind of depressing or serious, or some of we them more We also have some comedies. Okay, we good. Have, okay. <laughs> we have what we call Losing <laughs> Control. It's uh, by Valerie Weiss, uh, based on her experiences at uh, Harvard, and it's very funny. It's oh, kind good. of a quirky. Uh, cool. <laughs> so there's a balance. That's good. Yeah, a little balance for everybody. Well, we actually have another clip. Let's go ahead and take a look at another clip. This film is titled "This Film Is Not Yet Rated." <laughs> this film is like I like that. Mm. <laughs> For 35 years, a secret group has controlled the way you see movies. There are clergy in the room. These are moral censors. They forced great filmmakers to change their art. I was so devastated. I got the call and they said NC-17. That's when my blood turned to ice water. Because the studio won't release your movie. No advertising budget. You can't run TV spots. No one's ever found out who they are. Who is controlling this thing and how are they controlling it? No one knows. That's the whole point. Until now. We're actually hiring a private investigator to try to find out who these people are on the board. <laughs> it's time the MPAA got a rating of its own. The MPAA is 
like that pinkish color building. There's absolutely no way of going in. When an Oscar-nominated director and a private dick well, They're going to all start coming out. We'll take some plates. That's the camera. It looks just like a little butt. Dig deep. Oh, a lot of a lot of women. We need to go for this. I'm going to put on my safety belt. And he's not even looking. I got him. Right there. Right there. Got a raider. To expose Hollywood's dirtiest secrets. Whoa. One woman is topless, breast exposed. So what I don't understand is who's counted the f Do you ever do interviews at all? No. I'm already divulging a lot here. At some point, I think I have to draw a line. If we're seeing my pubic hair, we get an NC-17. Violence is fine, sex isn't. You almost got us caught. They were going, who, look at that man. When is he filming us? Discover the movie. You are dealing with a very powerful censorship group. Hollywood doesn't want you to see. I'm going to say the F word. It's the fascist system. Hi, is this the MPAA? Uh, yes, yes. I'd like to submit my film uh, for a rating. It's a documentary. It's about how films are rated. I love that. I want to see that one. That That's looks really cool. interesting. Well, Norman, let me ask you this, because I think that what happens is a lot of times in an independent uh, situation or when we're looking at film festivals, a lot of the films that we get to see are so wonderful, but they don't get to the mainstream recognition that they really deserve. So how can movie makers like yourself engage the general audiences to embrace the smaller indie films? I think the key to indie filmmaking is the digital technology, which is um, instant okay. all across the world. Uh, my indie film, uh, the Rainbow Boy mm -hmm. uh, was set to be released in uh, uh, February, March of uh, this year. Okay. Is uh, online distribution gives us the the great opportunity to be really creative, uh, innovative, and I think that um, as we focus on the um, online distribution, it, mm -hmm. gi it gives us more economic opportunities for our film. It, sure. it, it, it show crafts our our art our are directing and are, are producing. So it seems like to me, uh, online distribution fits perfectly for uh, independent filmmakers. Absolutely. So that, that to me, that's the key. That's a great point. We have more access to a world audience, so it gives us more opportunities. So. And well deserved. Right. Now, Alton, New Mexico has been ranked the third best state in the country for film production. And how, how has the industry evolved in New Mexico over your 30 year career in film? New Mexico has always had a history of filmmaking. There's a, right. actually a book published called 100 Years of Filmmaking in New Mexico, mm. so it's been around a long time. Uh, I think New Mexico was very forward-thinking. It was the first state-operated film office in the country before any other state. New Mexico had one. Mm. And in the last 30 years, it's grown considerably, especially in the last probably five years that uh, the incentive program has been in place, which right. has really increased the level of filmmaking. Right, and there have been some changes. Do so you think it'll continue to grow after the change? There's been some little changes this year with that. There have been some changes. I can say this, that we had a new administration, mm -hmm. um, and um, it was shouted from the rooftops that this was not supported. Mm -hmm. And now, after some study, it's being whispered that it is supported. Okay. And in mm -hmm. a time when jobs are so critical in the country, uh -huh. to do away with jobs is really, or to limit jobs, is really not a positive yeah. approach for our state. You got that right. And, and the film business here is really creating a lot of jobs, and we don't want to lose that it's opportunity. It's been a lot of indecision. Yeah. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, here's the good thing. You're not going away just yet. We've got more to talk about. So when we come back, more films and more with the filmmakers. Don't go away. Thanks, guys. Well, we are back with Santa Fe Independent Film Festival co-founder Jack Paisner and filmmaker Norman Patrick Brown and producer Alton Walpole. Thanks so uh, much to all of you, really, for being here. Such interesting information. And the festival actually starts Thursday in Santa Fe. And uh, it Wednesday. It starts Wednesday? It starts Wednesday the oh, okay. 19th with a uh, screening of Ace in the Hole, the 1951 oh, Billy Wilder right. shot in New yes. Mexico. Okay, good. Yes. Well, thank you for correcting me on that one. So, yes, Wednesday is when it all begins. And, and you don't want to miss out mm -hmm. because there are going to be workshops. There are going to be discussions. Discussions, so not just seeing the movies. So tell us a little bit about the workshops and if everybody can attend these. Yeah, the okay. workshops, um, almost all of them are free to the public. Norman Patrick Brown will be speaking nice. on his style and craft. Kirby Dick of this film is not yet rated. Oh, Digby good. Wolf. Also, the only one that uh, you pay for is Cheryl Roberts' uh, 
casting workshop, and that's because it be comes with a professional headshot by oh. Valerie Santagto. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, Santa fans can come and get their headshot. Hey, it there's a lot adorable. of actors out there, too, so mm. they'll be happy to hear that. Good stuff there. And, of course, there are the parties. Are those open to the public, or are those private? There's only one private party on Sunday okay. night. Every okay. other night, there's a party open to the public at some of the greatest places in Santa Fe. Really? Oh, yeah, Santa Fe Bar and Grill, um, Vanessi, Fun. Cowgirl Hall of Fame is sponsoring the opening night party with IATSE Local 480. Oh, how cool. Oh, well, I will be in Santa Fe this weekend. I have visitors in town, so we'll have to get our way out there. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, I want to go, but... How do I go? Where do I get tickets? How do I get information? So let's tell them. Well, tickets are um, ticketsantafe.com. That's the Lensic box office. Oh, okay. Or you can call the Lensic mm -hmm. at 988-1234. Perfect. And I uh, also want to mention that we're doing a concert Saturday night. Ooh. Blind Drive will be performing following a screening of The Dead Inside, which recently showed at the Albuquerque Film Fest. Oh, oh very nice. cool. Now, wait, what's what Blind Drive? Safe? Yeah. Uh, Blind Drive's like a heavy metal, so that'll be for oh. like the young people. And okay. simultaneously, at mm -hmm. Santa Fe Bar and Grill, we have a VIP party for everyone else. Oh, okay. wow. Fun. Now, I know we have like a lot of moms watching, and of course, they probably have kids who may be thinking about a career in film. Mm -hmm. As movie makers, do you guys have any advice for the kids or for the parents of kids that kind of want to get into the movie industry. Yeah, and we also have movies for them. Like Saturday right. morning, we have a youth program that's got movies made by youth and for you. Oh, that's great. Followed by Sunday morning is the family program where they can bring their moms and dads. We'll be busing in 18 kids from Cuba, New Mexico. Oh and gosh. they'll be sleeping on the floor in sleeping bags and attending uh, Norman's workshop and learning from the best. Yeah, now, and do learning you have any what it's like on, to be on a film crew and actually have to stay all night and sleep on the floor. Now, do you have any personal <laughs> advice, any of you? Yeah. Or, for, for me, I've, over the, over my lifetime, I've probably watched thousands of movies. Mm -hmm. I watch all kinds of genres. I, I look at the, how scenes are edited. Mm -hmm. I look at music. Uh, but most importantly, what I look at is uh, dialogue. So early on in my life, I, I was really blessed to uh, really love writing. Yeah. And as time went on, I, I, I just loved movies. So to me, the key was writing, creative writing, and mm -hmm. looking at films and you know, the editing style, the music, uh, dialogue. So for me, that, that was my, you know, how, how I wanted to be a filmmaker as a little boy. So now here I am. You know. So it really starts with the passion. Exactly, exactly. It always does. Exactly. And what about for you? I would say to young filmmakers to pursue your dream. Yeah. And that's kind of what's so great about an independent film festival is most of these films are driven by the passion of one person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the passion that drives our industry. And if you're a young filmmaker and studying it, follow your dream. Do that's it. Right. Just you know, do it. It's, it's good that's to look right. at independent films. They're, they're remaking so many things in the regular movies. You know, there's so much more creativity in the independent films. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go. And they're not driven by the money in the studios. You're driven by your passions. No, and they're driven by a really point of view. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much, really. I mean, we thank appreciate you. you being here. And we want to let everybody know that taking us to break, we've got another great clip. This is from The Power of Two. Check it out. My name is Annabelle Mariko Stenzel. My name is Isabel Yuriko Stenzel Burns. We are twin sisters. We were both born with cystic fibrosis. Every hospitalization they experienced, I felt like I did something wrong, and it was very, very difficult. Cystic fibrosis causes progressive lung disease. As your lungs become more damaged, the only hope for survival is lung transplantation. Right now, we have this terrible problem uh, of a limitation in the numbers of available organs for those who desperately need them. She's 29 and she's at the end of her life with cystic fibrosis. No matter how hard I try, it's still going to win. When you receive a gift as amazing as a transplant, there is some sense of obligation to give back. Advocacy is the engine of change, and the power of advocacy is it can start with one person. In this case, two people. 